the next tool what we are going to study like or you can say the tools which we studied like the symbols the valencies will be now used in writing the chemical formulas right you know that if you uh, just remember the valencies and if you can just recall the valencies in a proper manner there is uh, the chemistry is not going to be difficult for you because you just need to write the valencies and the chemical formulas will be on your tips right so see just look at the board i'm just telling you the rules that how you can write the chemical formulas how you like you can just uh, randomly say the formula of the compound but just you don't need to cram it right so just look at the board and once you will be thorough with the procedure it won't be a tough task for you so before we start the chemical formula we should know that there are three kinds of compounds that we often come across there are the compounds which are made up of metal and non metal there are the compounds which we come across that is non metal and non metal and sometimes we come across a compound which carries a two elements along with oxygen so there is uh, you can say a different uh, technique of uh, just making the chemical formulas or you can say by uh, there is a technique of just naming them right so just look at the boards you'll know everything now so when you when there is a compound between metal and non metal and you need to make a chemical formula so first of all start with metal right like this and the second letter which you have to write a, so by leaving a small space between them is will be a non metal right the second step which you have to do is just write their valencies on the top for example in this case i am taking the valency of metal as positive and non metal as two negative it can be you know the, you, you, if you will remember the valencies so just write the valencies of the particular element which you are asked to make the chemical formula right so just write the valencies then just criss cross them by interchanging their valencies right write the valency of this on its foot foot and the valency of the second on the foot of the first right so the first of all when you are criss crossing them don't change the places of the metals and non metals they will remain as such what you do have to do you just have to just cross the valencies and when you are crossing the valencies don't write plus or your you can say positive or negative signs on the foot you just need to write the number right so here is the plus plus means when there is no number that indicates one so uh, that means i have to write one and this side i may write or not it means the same so i'm not writing it right so it uh, the valency of non metal is 2 negative that is 2 so i'm writing on this foot so the formula becomes like this right now i am stating this with an example for example i take an example of um, you can say the mag uh, magnesium nitrite magnesium nitrite now out of it what is metal magnesium so obviously we are going to start with the metal so i've written metal mg the symbol for the magnesium is you know that is mg nitride means nitrogen so i'm writing nitrogen the second step just write the valencies i remember those valencies so i just wrote them and if i forget it so just simply just uh, write the atomic number write the configuration write this yes two positive valence electron two that means it is going to show two positive right and if you just uh, remember the valencies chart so just it is a tricky part that just write the valencies on the top you don't need to write the atomic number no don't need to write the configuration or such that right so the third step is that to criss cross them so i know that i don't have to interchange the places so i'm not interchanging the places i'm just making them closer because now they'll be uh, behaving as a one unit right so i'm just uh, i've just written them Uh, uh, you can say i've just decreased the space between them now the fourth step is that i have to write the valency of this on this foot and the valency of this on this i have to interchange the valencies and the one thing i need to remember when i'm interchanging the valencies i don't need to write the positive or negative signs that signs only matter when we are writing the first letter and the second letter so that uh, there is no confusion that we have to write the metal first or the non metal first it is always the metal uh, element with the positive valencies valency which is written first right so i'm just interchanging the valencies the two positive that means two is going to be on the foot of the n and 3 is going to be in the foot of this so this is the formula for the magnesium nitrite right and one more thing you need to remember whenever we are naming a compound formed of metal and non metal how we name it we have to write the name of the metal so this is metal so i have i am writing i am writing magnesium right 
and what you do and in case of non metal i know it is the nitrogen so what will be done as in the, like at the end of the nitrogen that means the suffix will be going to change it will no longer remain as nitrogen its suffix will be ide now so that means it will become nitride so therefore this name is not magnesium nitrogen it is magnesium nitride right so this is how you are going to make the chemical formulas between the metals and the non metals right now we'll be taking up the compounds between non metal and non metal so how i'll be making a compound between non metal and non metal like for example when we are naming the compounds between non metal and non metal we know the, the first of all we know the kind of bonding they show is a covalent bond because they just share an electron and the type of bond they show is an ionic bond we have discussed in the previous units as well so when you are making a covalent bond between the non metal and non metal so we have the molecules right so what is the molecular formula for that so whenever we indicate the molecular formula we use the terms mono di tri for indicating the number of atoms which are present in it for example to make you understand i am writing an example see we get uh, we get to see nitrogen nitrogen so show so many variable valencies right so i am just uh, picking the compounds of various nitrogen or nitrogen and oxygen and just let you know that how what is the difference of naming them so we get nitrogen as n2o also we get no also we get n2o3 also we get n2o5 also so that means there are many nitrogen or uh, oxygen compounds because nitrogen show variable valency so what is the basic thing that uh, i need to tell you that where this mono di tri is being used so where it is used it is just used as a prefix this uh, the mono di and tri is going to indicate the, they will act as a prefix that means they will be written at the at the starting of the name right like this is nitrogen and oxygen right so i'm just writing nitrogen and the other element is oxygen i have written it now the question comes how many nitrogens what you can see two so i'm just pref prefixing di nitrogen oxygen so that its name becomes di nitrogen oxygen right and when i am talking uh, uh, talking about this no what does this be becomes that is nitrogen again oxygen how many nitrogen one how many oxygen one so it is nitrogen sorry one more thing i need to tell you i missed it it is di nitrogen and on the, the second part you need to write the oxide means oxygen will no longer become as this it will become oxide so it is di nitrogen oxide because it ends with a negative radical so oxygen always ends with ide right and when we are talking about no so it becomes nitrogen oxide how many oxides mono oxide so its name is nitrogen mono oxide and when i am talking about this again i am writing nitrogen oxygen as oxide how many nitrogen two to so, di nitrogen how many oxygen try so it is di nitrogen trioxide similarly di nitrogen 5 means penta penta oxide so this is how you are going to name the compounds of non metals and non metals don't forget as i forget uh, when i was explaining you don't forget to write the oxide right don't don't write oxygen it's wrong you have to write the oxide right so this is how you are going to name the non metal non metal compounds which are just bonded to each other by covalent bond similarly we have the compounds between the two elements and the oxygen right for example uh, you can say the quest, uh, the example coming in my mind is kclo3 and kclo2 right what you call them see it is so how you will be writing this see they both appear to be same they consist of two elements as i told you two elements and oxygen oxygen can be 1 2 3 4 any right so when you are writing uh, the formula for this or the, you can when you are writing the name for it you need to write the name of the two elements first so that means it is potassium clo potassium clo now what i am doing is when which out of them which will contain less oxygen or you can say which will which will contain the uh, one more oxygen than the other its name is going to end with ate so that is why i am writing its name as potassium chlorate and see it has one oxygen less than it so it's its name is potassium chloride so what we what is done the suffix uses 
the one with the more oxygen is a, a as 8 and one with the less oxygen as 8. Similarly, in this it is used as prefix that is if it is 1 then mono, if it is 2 di, here di, tri, these are all acting as a prefix and in this what we are doing, we are using the suffix that means the suffix is just change to ide, ide. So, this is how we are going to write the chemical formulas and just to make you more uh, familiar with it, I think it is clear now, just to make you more familiar with it, I want you to know that how, I want that I should state few examples for you and it should be clear that how more molecular formulas can be formed, right. For example, we have magnesium hydroxide. How I will be writing the formula for it? Again, I will be using a metal Mg hydroxide OH. The second step, I will be writing the valency for it. I remember it is 2 positive and it is negative or hydroxide is a radical with a negative valency. So, I have just written it right. Now, the sec next I will be crisscrossing it like this. I will be writing this to this side and the one this side right. So, if, uh, whether I write or not it does not matter because whether you write one or not it means the same. So, do you think this formula is right? Tell me do you think that this formula what I have made is right? No, it is wrong, it is going to be absolutely wrong. The reason being see this radical contains two atoms, radical is that the group of atoms that bears a charge that means it has the oxygen and hydrogen. But when I am writing this 2, this means this 2 is uh, only specified by the hydrogen atoms, it has no link with the oxygen atom. But hydroxide behave as one unit, so that means it is wrong. Whenever you see a radical, you need to just enclose it in a bracket and write the value which you have crossed with. So, this is a right formula, but this if you write this kind of formula, it is going to be wrong, right. So, whenever you get a radical and you are in just crisscrossing, you need to write the valency and you are just need to enclose that in a bracket indicating that this, this 2 is uh, the assigned to this the particular elements which are enclosed in the brackets. Right. So, this is how we are, you are going to write the chemical formulas and you are just uh, going to write the prefixes and uh, again I am telling you again the same thing. If you wish to have a good uh, hand in chemistry, you need to know or you need to well versed with the valencies. Once you will be well versed with the valency, chemistry is going to be on your tips. Just keep this my advice with you and just uh, when you will do that and just uh, see to it that if you compare yourself with your classmates, you are going to succeed because if somebody is not well versed with the valencies, he is zero in chemistry because chemistry does not understand the paragraphs, it understands or you can say the chemistry talk on the basis of chemical reactions. So, just be familiar with the valencies because if you know if you will know the valencies then only you are going to build the chemical formulas and if you are going to mention the chemical formula then only you will be able to do the chemical reaction. So, just make yourself well versed with the valency nothing is difficult you just need to recall them and 1 to 20 atomic number is so easy for you you know that you just you can you, uh, you can just write the atomic number with uh, this thing the configuration and just can pick the valence shell electron. But after that I think that uh, after 20 uh, elements with atomic number 20 it will be difficult for you. So, just what a big deal just write them just make a tabular chart just make a term you can say a chart uh, on which the valency chart just place on the thermocol and just the way you wherever you sleep just uh, this thing keep it that side like uh, pin it on the wall and whenever you get up just make a habit to read it and I am sure that within a week you will be familiar you will be more good more good in, uh, in the valencies if you will compare uh, yourself with me right. So, just uh, the one the thing that I want to tell you just just do it, you can do it and this valency is not a big deal.